how the newly elected ruling party impacts the US stock market and what will the potential returns be. With the midterm elections around the corner, this is a hot topic for all investors. I'm going to share my opinion based on the historical data and later I will share with you what I intend to do with my investments if either party wins. I will share the exact qualities a stock investment needs to have to beat out the average returns of the market even in bad political or economic times. As always, always said with educational purposes and is not meant as financial advice. In order to prepare optimally, I studied the last 75 years of political and financial history in the US and how they correlate. The study is mostly done through information laid out by Forbes and it encompasses the political and investing landscape since World War II until today. Since then, the Dow Jones Index has averaged an 8.3% annual return and the investing world has gone through several more wars, energy embargoes, a stock market tech bubble, a housing bubble and a pandemic. Since 1946, Republicans have held the presidency of the United States 53% of times compared to 47% of times for Democrats, so that's pretty much even. Control of Congress tells a different story though. The Democrats have controlled the Senate 63% of times while Republicans had the control for the rest 37%, while for the House, 68% of times Democrats have had control and 32% of times the Republicans were in charge, respectively. The full control of the Presidency, House and Senate have been also quite rare, especially for Republicans as only 10% of the time since 1946 they have had full control of the political landscape, while 28% of times the Democrats have had full control. The following chart is all that we need to take a quick glance at the results. The information comes from Mike Patton from Forbes. By far the most interesting results are seen in column E when the Congress was split. This has happened only 16% of times and the result is an average yearly return of 12.9%, which is with about 50% above the average of 8.3% for the entire period. Also, what can be easily derived from this data is that when Republicans are in control of the Senate, which is column B, or the House, which is column C, stocks have a much better chance of outperforming with both instances being quite above the average for the period 11.3 and 10.7 percent respectively the only time when democrats have had the edge is when they hold the presidency then the average stock market returns are about nine percent when republicans have had control which is column d the average return is below the average with only an 8% yearly returns. But returns are even worse when the total control is in the hands of Democrats with 6.7% returns over this time. The conclusion that can be done here is that a split Congress is best for US stocks, most likely due to both good policy proposals from both parties. But what will I do in the upcoming situation? Well, the only right answer is it doesn't really matter. What needs to be discussed are the monetary policies implemented by the Fed and also you need to have a proper analysis models which I'll share with you in a short moment. When the central bank is on the path to QT, which is quantitative tightening, then the market is for sure set to fall. QT means an increase of the main interest rate and a lack of money printing. This is happening in order for the economy to be cooled off from the effects of inflation, which is now hovering above 8% in the United States, the highest in 40 plus years. With the following graph, it is obvious what I mean. When central banks are on the path to QE, quantitative easing, meaning money printing and lowering rates, 
This perfectly correlates with an increase in the S&P 500 returns and as soon as they stopped this, we saw the top of the market. What I intend to do is buy undervalued good quality companies and time has proven that companies with the following characteristics have beat the market. The three main parts to a good stock investment is to have a high profitability, safe liquidity levels and high efficiency metrics. At the end I'll share another fourth important factor as a bonus. First, if a company does not have profitability, meaning if it does not have a solid net income for the last several years and the next several years to come, the business is unproven. I guess if I tell you, hey guys, my company is losing 100 million per year, but I think it has huge potential in the long term, investing in this company wouldn't look so appealing to you. Well, this is the same with a lot of public companies now. Also, the profitability needs to be high in relation to the price. This means we need low valuations as the lower valuation increases our future stock market returns. When I buy high, the return is low and vice versa. Check out my individual stock analysis videos here on the channel as there I go through each of these qualities one by one with real examples of good quality stocks. In the current times of massive global debts, a company needs to have a very solid liquidity level. This means it needs to have low debt. Debts can be examined through several ways in relation to the company's equity, in relation to its free cash flows, compared with the EBITDA or compared with the yearly interest payment. It needs to pay out to maintain the business. The lower the debt levels, the lower the risk. When talking about the efficiency of a business, I am talking about analyzing how well a company is managing its cash and assets. If a company does not exemplify a good level of capital efficiency, then over the mid to long term, this will reflect in lower business growth. The higher the efficiency, the better the investment. As a bonus here, I want to place a fourth level of security to an investment, which helps me to have a higher long term return. And this is for a company to have a moat, a term coined by Benjamin Graham, author of one of the best investing books, The Investing Bible, The Intelligent Investor. And the term was also made famous by Warren Buffett, his best student. This term means a company should have a very clear cut and a unique competitive advantage which does not allow for new competitors to quickly come and take market share. Examples of these kinds of companies now are the big oil companies, the big tech monopolies, the food and beverage oligopolies like Walmart, Coca-Cola, Pepsi and others alike. At the end of the day, it does not matter which political party is in control. If I buy companies which do not have these traits, then my returns are going to be subpar and I am at risk of capital loss. Using these basic formulas and teachings will help me beat out the system, no matter who is in charge. For now, I recommend you to watch my meta stock analysis or my upcoming Apple stock analysis here on the channel. I have also analyzed energy companies and these methods have helped me to massively increase my returns and at the same time lower my risk and they give me the confidence that no matter the political landscape, I have invested in good quality businesses that will most likely outperform. With this I end the video, subscribe for more market analysis and comment down below which other topics you want me to cover next. Hit the bell icon so that you won't miss out any of my upcoming videos. Goodbye for now and until next time.